Well, this game came out of seemingly nowhere. Poke Rogue is a new hit take on the Pokemon genre. Playing mostly off its battle system, you kind of fight your way stage to stage, either capturing or defeating your opponent. In between each round, a little shop pops up where you can purchase different things like Pokeballs, healables, or certain held items like the Silk Scarf or maybe the Black Belt. In the game's base mode, the objective is to reach stage 200 and basically like collecting Pokemon and stacking items along the way so that you can essentially defeat the extremely hard boss you're going to find there. <laughs> Okay, please, please, please just let this be Charizard. Come on. It's Jesus Pikachu. Christ! The highest wave I've personally gotten to so far was 188, and let me just tell you, this game is extremely unforgiving. A run that you think is just simply impossible to lose on, you can just get completely wiped out by a trainer that one-shots all of your Pokemon consistently. Stage 145 I found to be a particular nuisance, because somehow your rival just ended up with a shiny Rayquaza, and this shiny Rayquaza is not normal, he hits so hard, like, this Rayquaza throws out numbers like Norbit's wife on a scale, like, it's just, it's insane. Hey, Norbit! Before you start the game, you go through a list of what the game calls starters, which has Pokemon of various costs. The game has a ton of starters that you can unlock by either capturing them during runs or hatching them through the game's egg system. These starters range from less useful Pokemon like Caterpie to absolutely cracked legendaries like Giratina. There is a daily rotation as well of Pokemon that are affected by... Pokerus, so watch out for little purple squares popping up around the starters that you're choosing from. Your team may only consist of Pokemon that add up to a cost of 10 or less. Um, you can collect candies similar to that from uh, the Let's Go series that allow you to either reduce the Pokemon's cost by two or unlock a passive ability. And some of these passives can get pretty crazy, so grinding them out I feel like is going to be pretty worth it in the long run if you want to consistently hit high rounds. You can stack the held items in this game as well and things like uh, iron and carbs, so grabbing them multiple times ends up being very effective, but they are for one Pokemon, so watch out for that. Items also do act a bit differently from the core Pokemon game, so make sure to check the summary of different things, or uh, if you can, try and look it up before you grab it while you're still on the shop screen. I've found that a very helpful strat that I've kind of began using is uh, I find a Pokemon that has the ability pick up, and I just kind of use them as a dedicated spot that I don't fight with, but they just collect items from all the fights that I go through, and then I transfer those items to my other Pokemon, depending on the use case. I found Meowth is a pretty solid early game Pokemon that you can find. I found him in the first 10 waves consistently, and he comes naturally with the ability pickup, so just make sure to cancel his evolution at like 25, I think, and he can just pick up items forever. Every 10 rounds, you get into either essentially like a boss fight of a Pokemon that is kind of like beefed up and has stages to him where you can't necessarily one-shot him even though sometimes I found you can one-shot them somehow maybe like super effective moves or critical hits the other thing that you can get set up with is a gym leader and beating these gym leaders net you egg vouchers and these vouchers are used to pull from the in-game candy machine essentially of Pokemon eggs there's four different rarities you can pull, which are common, rare, epic, and legendary. Eggs can be hatched just simply by completing battles in the classic mode, each rarity needing an ascending number of battles to hatch. The egg moves in this game tend to be pretty overpowered, and the way that the IV system works makes hatching copies of your starter Pokemon very beneficial. Damn it, I f said berry. The egg moves in this game tend to be pretty overpowered, and the way that the IV system works, it's really beneficial to hatching multiple of the same species of Pokemon over and over again. Basically, the IV for every starter you have is increased based on how much higher the newly captured or hatched one is. So say your Charmander has a base HP stat of 10. So if you go out and capture a Charmander with a base HP stat of 10, the next time you start the game with Charmander, the base HP stat will now be 20. So hatching or catching the same guy over and over again will eventually give you stronger stats. The game also has shinies that you can either find in the wild or hatch from eggs that you get in the gotcha area. One of the gotcha machines is actually set up to boost your odds of finding shinies from the eggs, 
and there's a second one that has a daily boosted legendary that you can pull from draws. Shinies actually have a solid use case in this game as well. Carrying shinies in your party increases a luck stat of sorts, which also increases the likelihood of you finding rarer items in the shop in between battles. Decreasing the cost of your starters with the candy system can have you starting with some wild parties, and if you stack enough shinies, you could just be going through the game getting extremely bountiful items early on. Well, I guess unless you're my friend Chair, who never gets anything. I've been shiny hunting a long time, so finding a Pokemon game that gave shinies a purpose past being amazing is just an insurmountable benefit that had me hooked immediately. There's also a daily mode that's kind of in beta at the moment that offers an even different approach from the classic mode. The daily mode caps off at 50 instead of 200, and it also has a score system that increases depending on different factors that happen in your run. Everyone that plays the daily mode starts out with the same Pokemon, and if you do good enough ramping your score up, then you can be placed on the weekly or daily leaderboards that appear on the in-game menu. They have a little roadmap in their Discord right now that goes over various features they want to add in the future. Things like an endless mode, a Nuzlocke, different classic mode additions, nicknames, a Hall of Fame, and even more things than all of that. Poke Rogue is pretty much exploding right now with an average daily player base of around 30,000 people. Like, 30,000 people is actually insane for a browser-based Pokemon game. Like, if, if this game was on Steam... It would be in the top 50 for most played daily games out of the entire platform. That, that's insane. All of its current hype does have me a bit scared, though, that Nintendo's going to come by with the old wiglet right in the bum and just cut the lights off, you know what I mean? However, from what I can tell, the devs behind Pokerogue aren't using it as an outlet to, like, profit off of. So with large sniffs of copium, I'm really hoping that we're safe. I, for one, hope the game continues to be available because I've been grinding the complete crap out of it. In the meantime, I think the best thing that we can do is just support the project and grind as many hours as we can into the new hit rogue like that is Pokey Rogue. After all, anything that does happen on the inside of Nintendo versus Pokey Rogue is completely out of our hands, so might as well just enjoy it while we have it, and if it does disappear, then it kind of just is what it is. Maybe they'll add some sort of offline mode or something, or an emulator of sorts that we can still play this off of, but for the moment, it's free, and it's in the browser, so get it. Check out Pokey Rogue using the link in the description. Like the video if you liked the video, and maybe I'll catch you in Pokey Rogue when they add PvP. Yeah. That's coming. Until then, stay safe, stay sexy, and stay squishy. Get your hands up!